Uh, I agree with everything that was, was just said. Um, I would say just generally speaking, the acceptance and usage of social media as my generation gets older and we become you know, in, in higher positions, this is how we communicate. And it really goes a long way for the perception of a company. Uh, if you have a well thought out um, social media presence and um, the ever you know evolving world of social media, it's only it's only going to pick up steam. It's only going to get more powerful. Uh, Facebook just rolled out their fan page uh, for for company pages, um, their timeline format. And I just honestly think the acceptance and usage of social media is only going to get stronger and keep growing, and more and more people are going to communicate through social media. We have found that it is very important to utilize video and, and to develop applications and to be able to show exactly what the products are and how it communicates. And we have developed different sized rooms and different acoustic areas indoors and out. And people go and they will see useful, beneficial, educational information that they can use and so it's really it's animated and it, it, it would be so the people then therefore begin to communicate with each other about well the size of my room is thus the ceilings are thus we've got windows glass metal and we've got a variety of variables that go into making acoustics work in a particular situation so the more people that we get online communicating with each other, the better we will be. And the more people that have examples of what they have done online, we know that this will continue to develop and propel and accelerate sales. But it's, we have found also there is, there, there's, there's price points beyond which they won't invest online and they require a human chat, a human touch, and we enable them to do that. So I think the ideal that we would like to see, uh, everybody knows the company into it, they actually, their service is now performed by their users because they're on a social network where they communicate with each other about what this issue and problem is, and they're really into it as they're really as moderators, not as the developer. So the question is from Sarah, um, and the question relates to, you know, companies are, are resource constrained often, um, and what would be kind of the top two or three list of things that you would do and you really invest in to really make a, a huge impact? Well, from, we, we are a small company compared to, the, we, we try and verticalize everything by you know, public safety, government, school, education, church, et cetera, et cetera, hospitality. Those are our markets. And we, we, we glean all of, <clears throat> we have our database, our list of customers and prospects, and we do email blasts specifically identifying that vertical market and with a message and a program specifically designed for that vertical market. So we don't just do general blasts, we don't just, it, you can waste a lot of money and think activity, don't confuse activity with results. You want to really be precise and target that market with your service, your product, your solution, your application. That's how I would control these echo what Don said, we also do a lot of targeted uh, emails, targeted marketing based on various lines of business and based on our, our customers and so forth. 
We also, as far as our social media channels are concerned, we have uh, you know follow, groups of followers. We have reporters. We have uh, potential employees. We have people in the manufacturing sector, which is one of the uh, uh, industries that we serve. So we try to put messaging out specific to those groups of followings, and you can do that. You can target those groups. Uh, as far as the channels that we currently use, it's Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, those are the four that we focus on now. Uh, we actually have had some uh, success connecting directly with uh, reporters on Twitter, although everything I read says that they prefer LinkedIn. My connections with reporters have taken place on Twitter. So I think it's, uh, you know, it, it, it depends on your industry and uh, who it is you're trying to target and the messages that you're trying to relay. And there are also tricks that you can do with your social media channels so that you can uh, syndicate, replicate information and post at one place so you're not having to do multiple postings and wasting time doing that. So I have some channels set up where the information will be duplicated uh, if I post it to Facebook, for instance, but if I post to Twitter, it's not necessarily duplicated because I'm doing a lot more informal conversations there. I hope that answered the question. Here. Uh, we could not hear the uh, question. If you could just briefly repeat the question. Yeah, sure. The question was relating to you know a lot of companies are resource constrained and you have to really focus your efforts. And if you really have to boil it down to maybe two or three things, you know what would you really what would be your top two or three list of, of efforts to really focus on cause marketing and social media? What really makes a large impact? Uh, number one would probably be our, our newsletter, which, uh, like I previously mentioned, reaches about 40,000 people. It's very intuitive. It can actually pick up on which articles uh, the end user is reading and then gear their next uh, newsletter. Um, it's pretty much tailored to what articles they would want to read. Uh, I would say our newsletter, um, Facebook and LinkedIn. LinkedIn has a lot of manufacturing food power presence. Uh, a lot of good conversation is going on there, and Facebook is actually building a lot of steam in the manufacturing and uh, food power arena as well. So I'd say those top three are our intuitive newsletter, LinkedIn, and Facebook are the ones that we would really focus all of our marketing efforts towards. Uh, for God Autism, I think Facebook has been a great vehicle for enhancing our brand and our brand recognition. It's also great juice for SEO. And uh, it also places us as a thought leader within, within the world of autism. And as I mentioned, many moms are on Facebook. So it's, and actually, uh, the competitors that I have um, to date don't actually have strong presence on Facebook. So that's one way that we are um, differentiating ourselves from our competitors. Uh, Twitter is interesting too, because that's, that helps us kind of keep abreast of of the conversation that's going on in, in the world of autism. And Paige uh, handles the Twitter. Um, what do you think the benefits are for us for Twitter? Uh, I think the biggest benefit for Twitter is it's an easy way for parents to ask other parents how they're handling a situation. And we can be in on that and, and without being too pushy in sales. Um, suggest a product that we have that might help them with that particular situation. So it's easy to give a quick solution, quick how-to, and really stay on top of what the industry needs are so we can we can tailor our product line to the parents' needs. Thank you. Yes, I think we have time for one more question. I'm Mary Arena. Um, my question is for the Hypertech God Autism team. Could you explain a little bit to the audience about um, your give back program, how you support local, regional, and national autism, other organizations, um, that it's not just a commercial um, for profit organization that you run? Sure, I, I, I'd love to talk about that. That's, that's the fun stuff that we do. We give approximately 5% of all our sales back to autism, and that is cash. Um, in addition to our time and other products that we donate to various um, fundraising uh, charitable causes as well. Um, this past year, we supported seven organizations. Um, one of my favorites is, um, it's called Act Today for Military Families. Um, if you've been watching the news recently, the CDC came out and said that one in 88 children in the United States will be diagnosed with an autism spectrum disorder. That ratio is um, a lot higher in the U.S. military. Nobody really knows why. 
Um, the last study was one in 80, but I'm sure it's even higher than that. And what um, this organization does, it takes dollars and gives them directly to families for therapy. Therapy for autism treatments can, can range broadly. Some kids are affected more um, strongly by autism than others, and different treatments um, have different results. For example, one treatment called ABA therapy, Applied Behavioral Analysis, can make the difference between a child becoming verbal and nonverbal. Intense ABA therapy can cost a family upwards of $40,000 a year. Now, our military families don't make big incomes. So we love donating cash to this organization because it's going directly to help children. Um, some other, of course, we, we donate to our local chapter, the Autism Society. We donate to uh, a charter school here in Ohio that is specifically for kids with ADHD and Asperger who have kind of fallen through the cracks of their public school systems. Um, we donate to another organization here in Ohio called Four Pals for Abilities, and they train autism service dogs. Um, Children with autism, especially ones that are more affected by autism, can be what call, are called runners, and they will run into traffic, they'll run into water, they have no sense of fear, and these children, terrible accidents can and do happen. So these dogs are trained to mind the children and to bring them back if they get into trouble, and then they also help these kids with the social skills and making interpersonal connections. So, and to train an autism service dog is approximately $10,000 per dog. So th those are just a handful of the organizations that, that we support. And that's, that's, um, that's our mission, and that's, that's what makes it all worth it. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate uh, everyone taking the time to be on the panel today. It was very insightful to hear uh, about uh, your efforts, both in cause marketing and social media, and how the two kind of converge. I think, without further ado, I'll turn it over to you, Mary. This was fabulous, wasn't it? all for coming. I, I think this was great and uh, I think we can all take away some lessons learned and, and think towards our future of how we can integrate social media and cause marketing. Um, as we're wrapping up the BMA year, I just have a few announcements. We can't believe it's almost over. These BMA cycles for Marlon and I go like the wind. Um, we have one more member dinner on April 24th in Winnetka. One more luncheon on May 3rd, and the topic for that is work-life balance. I think we all need to be there. Um, <laughs> BizBash is on May 8th, and that's our big annual fundraiser, and it's a great party. So please please uh, try to attend that. Our final breakfast is on April uh, May 16th, right? May 16th, and that's going to be um, focusing on social media and measurement. The title is Get Past the Hype and Get Down to Business, Measuring Your Social Media Efforts. And I think that's something that we all know um, we have a very difficult time getting our arms around, and I think the entire marketplace has a hard time getting our arms around. Um, May 30th to June 1st is our annual conference here in Chicago at the Swiss Hotel. If you have not attended the conference, it is a fabulous uh, couple of days of programs and education. All the details are on the VMA Chicago website, so please go and, and dig into it and sign up. Um, the last thing I would ask is if you could please um, take your napkins and cups and deposit them in the garbage on your way out. That would help us. And thanks for coming. Thank you.